I'm Pastor Bruce Gardner from Homer City Church of the Nazarene. Welcome to this, our third week of Advent. My fellow pastors of the Homer City Ministerium and I, we hope that you are enjoying this virtual series focusing on the hope, peace, love, and joy of Advent. I have really appreciated the time this year to reflect on God's ultimate gift of Jesus and all that it means to us as we wait in anticipation of our Savior. As we continue this journey of Advent, let's look at how love fits into our celebration. In 1 John 4.10, John says to us, This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You know, it's hard for us to comprehend just what that really looks like in the Christmas story. We all know the story. Even a child understands the baby in a manger. But do we really understand? Really? Can we actually process the idea of God of the universe coming to us as a baby because of love? Anne Voskamp, in her book, The Greatest Gift, says it like this. Our God, who breathes stars in the dark, he breathes Bethlehem's star, then takes on lungs and breathes in stable air. We are saved from hopelessness because God came with infant fists and opened wide his hand to take the iron sharp edge of our sins. Our God who forms and delivers the black of the heavens, he waits patiently like an embryo in a womb and delivers himself to free you. We are saved from forever pain because God pierced the dark and came to the pinpoint of us in the universe and took the nails. Our God who cradles whole galaxies in the palm of his hand, whom highest heavens cannot contain. He folds himself into our skin, and he uncurls his newborn fingers in the cradle of a barn feeding trough, and we are saved from ourselves. We are saved from our loneliness because God is love, and he can't stand to leave us by ourselves to ourselves. That is the message of Christmas. We need a Messiah, and for unto us a child is born. God can't stay away. This is the love story that has been coming for you since the beginning. The God who walked with us in the garden in the cool of the evening before the fall shattered our looseness with him is the God who came after his people in the pillar of cloud and of fire because he could not bear to let his people wander alone. He is the God who loves us and likes us and isn't merely 50% or 72.3% for us, but the God who is always, unequivocally, 100% for us. The God who is so for us that he is the God who chooses to be with us. Wow, doesn't that make you think a little bit? You know, John in his gospel gives us a, a declaration of the depth of God's love for us that we all know, but I think we have a tendency to gloss over it and not really dwell on what it truly means or should mean for us in reality. And that declaration is this. We find it in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it through him. Boskamp continues on this line. And now over to Bethlehem and the nativity according to Luke. The star hangs high, victorious on a silent night, a holy night. Now all is calm. God comes. God comes quietly. This night a battle has been waged and won for you. Love had to come back for you. Love had to get to you. The love that has been coming for you since the beginning. He slays dragons for you. This is the truest love story of history. And it's his story. And it's for you. This is love you can't comprehend. You can only feel and touch this kind. 
there in the place where you feel rejected, you can be touched by God. There in the places you feel small, you can touch God. He came in the flesh. Wow, I like the way she writes. As we continue to prepare for this Advent this year and this week, I would ask you to pause and reflect on how immense and how incredible God's love really is. And then I would ask you, how can we show this kind of love to our family, to our neighbors, to our coworkers, and even to strangers? Pray and ask God to put people in your path who need to be loved, and then go the extra mile and put your faith into action. We are praying that we all shine his light brightly into a world who desperately needs a savior. With that, I bid you a Merry Christmas and may God bless.